2022 Regional Edward R. Murrow Award for Excellence in Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion for the Culture Club. KUAM News Headlines are presented by Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust. Serving Micronesia since 1938, Matson celebrating 25 years of commitment to Guam, Micronesia, and the CNMI. Cars Plus, Guam's leader in sustainability and electric vehicles. Learn more at carsplusguam.com. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it, and King's Restaurant, serving your local breakfast, lunch, and dinner favorites for over 45 years. Ahead on KUAM News Primetime, a class action lawsuit that fought to give frontliners double pay at the start of the COVID pandemic now tossed. But attorneys not giving up the fight just yet. Nestor Lacanto with the report. Plus, just days after one father shared frustration over lack of response from police after his daughter was attacked, another dad speaks out saying his case is nine months old. Authorities still making zero arrests. And the island lost one of its talented musicians, Big Ben Ngalta, passing away over the weekend at a hospital in Washington. Joe Nugan Charfris with a look at his incredible life of music. Half a day and good evening. I'm Nick Delgado. Welcome to Primetime. Well, a large group of GovGuam employees that were seeking double pay for work during the early days of the COVID public health emergency will not be getting the additional money, at least for now. Their class action lawsuit was dismissed without prejudice by Superior Court Judge Elisa Riarty, which means it's still le alive legally. Nestor Lacanto reports. Attorney Josh Walsh represents a group of several hundred line agency workers who are seeking the same double pay that autonomous agency workers got. So you had these government of Guam workers showing up to work, their agencies were closed, but they're still showing up, nurses, cops, firefighters. Uh, and the same way they would do that with 150 mile per hour winds outside uh, in a typhoon or in a hazardous uh, you know, wartime situation of something like that got declared. Uh, they went to work on the promises and the ideas from their regulations that they would get paid this way. But at a loop, the attorney general and the line agencies saw otherwise, triggering the lawsuit heard by Judge Elise Iriarty, who found that in this case, the government can't be sued. The judge didn't say you know, the regulations don't read the way we say they should be read. The judge did not say that the workers shouldn't be paid. What the judge said was on Guam, and, you know, we, there's differing views of this. You know, you can't sue the king, the sovereign, without the sovereign's permission. Instead, he says the judge wanted plaintiffs to exhaust administrative challenges. Going down the sovereign immunity uh, administrative review rabbit hole to the CSC is a waste of time. Uh, there is no doubt the way that our previous attorney general, Levin Camacho, what his perspective was about whether the money was owed. It's not, in his view. Uh, there was no doubt about the way the governor's perspective was. It's not owed. That was her view. So what's next? Our class members want action, right? So so going down a years-long journey with the Guam Supreme Court to get an answer to bring us back to this might, 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 might be a path. Another path, because it was dismissed without prejudice, is maybe to see if we can rocket through uh, this uh, Civil Service Commission uh, pay grievance uh, invitation from the court, exhaust that, even though we know exactly what the answer is going to be, uh, because, you know, barring Attorney General Moylan's changing of perspective on legal opinions that General Camacho wrote, we know what the answer is going to be from Gov Guam. Other possible solutions include a federal lawsuit, and then there's the potential for the Guam legislature to step in. Walsh says all options are still on the table. For KOAM News, I'm Nestor Lacanto. Thanks, Ness. Well, now to a second case where a parent contends his police complaint has gone nowhere. The father saying his teenage child was attacked by a school aide while on campus, the alleged incident happening months back. He speaks with KUAM today after seeing that he's not alone in playing the waiting game for police to investigate. Nicholas Ballesteros' 17-year-old son is a student at George Washington High School. His son has autism, and he says this school year is going well compared to how things ended before the summer break. There was an incident between uh, my son and the school aide. Uh, in short, um, the school aide sl uh, slapped my son. It's like uh, what happened is my son, they said, my son slapped him, so he like slapped him or punched him back. The incident unfolding last April at the Manila campus, the man accused of hitting the teen was a one-to-one -one aide with Guam Department of Education. I was 
really upset and everything because it's just that, you know, we, I trusted the school to take care of my son and everything. Ballesteros says he learned the employee has since been let go, but his assault complaint with the Guam Police Department hasn't moved since then. I went there three times. That was like May and June. Every time I go there, um, you know, like they wait, they make me wait for five minutes and they always say they're looking for the guy who has my, you know, case and everything. And after that, you know, they said, uh, uh, we'll call you back. He says they never called back. It's like they can't even respond with anything that, oh, we're working on it or something like that. They couldn't respond. That's why what I did after that, I just keep on calling and calling. But, you know, what's the use of that 475 number for them if they don't even answer? After visits to the police headquarters in Tizen resulted in zero updates on his son's case, he reached out to the attorney general's office. But he says the AG's investigators then told him they never got the case from police. They always say, you know, like, make them do their job and everything, right? You know, don't don't put the law on my hand and those things. But, you know, it's been over, what, uh, ten, uh, like nine or ten months, but until now, nothing. This upset dad now left wondering if anything will ever get done. I try not to put it on my mind and everything, but it's like, what's going on? Where's the law? <laughs> mm -hmm. And this is a simple, uh, what they call that, a simple investigation because on the report, the school aide admitted what he did and he said that, you know, he apologized. So, you know, I mean, like, what's going on? It's a question that even to this day goes unanswered. Police spokesperson officer Berlin Sevilla only able to confirm with KUAM today the assault complaint was taken. She declined to release any details, only stating the case remains under investigation. Well, a decision is in and University of Guam professor Ron McNich's punishment for his alleged rude, insulting and belligerent statements amid the great debate still stands. As Destiny Cruz reports, the Board of Regents deciding today that the educator's discipline will remain on his academic record. The University of Guam's slap on the wrist toward Professor Dr. Ron McNinch is upheld. McNinch telling KUAM after today's Board of Regents meeting, it is extremely unusual. It's not normal that the Regents are hearing this type of case. He contends, I am the only person they picked on like this. It's not the Regents, it's the administration. The issue is over the disciplinary action handed down by UOG President Dr. Thomas Kreis, which will remain on McNinch's academic record. McNinch is being reprimanded, accused of violating the university's policy whenever he emailed staff and students about the great debate that never happened. He appealed the disciplinary action before the board, contending he has the right to speak freely on the issue. But UOG Regent Bernie Valencia doubled down that the email is UOG property, adding that the behavior, tone, and lack of respect McNich used is unacceptable. These emails are not from someone that I would consider a role model, a leader, or a professional. Certainly not representative of an academic who thinks highly of himself or herself or are proud of his or her work. Valencia agreeing that the punishment fit his actions. An ego was harmed or hurt upon learning of the risk that one candidate wouldn't attend the great debate. Valencia adding McNinch could have used this as an opportunity for students to learn how to cope with rejection along with tact and respect. The board ultimately decided to make changes to the president's final decision, but it didn't change the punishment. McNinch telling KYM he plans to once again appeal it. Destiny Cruz, KYM News. Thanks, Destiny. Well, his death has been ruled a homicide. The autopsy report for Anthony A.J. Mandiola II has been completed. The results show he died from multiple gunshots. Nathan Ojeda has since been indicted for his murder in the Superior Court of Guam. Ojeda allegedly told police earlier this month he was driving by Mandiola's hog at home when he was shot at first. But a witness told police Ojeda allegedly pulled the trigger first, adding that they fired back to defend themselves. Shooting, Mendiola was 38 years old. His funeral is tomorrow at Our Lady of Mount Carmel Church in Hoggett. A serial robber accused of targeting multiple stores and game rooms while armed with a gun is captured. 30-year-old Eugenio Sones is charged with 
two counts of second-degree robbery via complicity, investigators learned Sones had partnered with two others identified as K.M. Rafik and Ryan Cruz in the alleged armed robberies. Rafik and Cruz have since been arrested. The places hit include the Adeloup Mobile, Keala's Mart, Speed Game Room, OK Fun Game Room, Winster 2, and Funland. Guam police have been searching for Sones for some time, even issuing a wanted flyer asking the community's help. He spent more than half his life in and out of prison. Now 70-year-old Jesus and Augustine Ignacio will serve two and a half years in a federal prison. He was sentenced before Chief Judge Francis Tedinko Gatewood today. Ignacio had since pleaded guilty to being a felon in possession of firearms and ammunition. Prison records show he had previous illegal drug and weapons arrests. It was said in court today that he was homeless and only used the gun authorities caught him with to shoot pigs. An ex-Guam Customs Lieutenant who admitted to drug possession in local court will not face any additional jail time. In his federal case, Henry Alvin Dia appeared before Magistrate Judge Michael Verdalio in district court today, admitted that he was caught with meth twice, committed a new criminal offense while under federal probation, and associated himself with a criminal. Parties in the district court of Guam agree Alvindia will be spared jail time. Alvindia answered to the violations connected to his 2015 federal bribery case after he picked up the new drug case in local court. It was said during today's hearing he is currently in the adult drug program. Over in the CNMI, Governor Arnold Palacio says he's exploring the need for short and long-term cost-cutting measures with the transition reports, indicating millions of dollars worth of deficit. The report also revealing that the former Secretary of Finance allegedly turned off budget controls in the Commonwealth's financial systems. Regional correspondent Tomas Manglutnia reports. We feel good. Commonwealth voters will have to wait and see as Governor Arno Palacios holds transition reports close to his chest before making them public. The governor writing in a press release that he needs more time to ensure the information is accurate. However, he says they're actively exploring the need for short- and long-term cost-cutting measures. Transition reports leaked to the media paint a picture of how the CNMI got into deficit spending. The committee found that while the financial management system for the government was equipped with a budget control to prevent overspending, at the instruction of the former Secretary of Finance, the controls were turned off to allow overrides to budget limitations causing uncontrolled expenditures. They say it allowed for unauthorized deficit spending across all departments and agencies. KUAM has reached out to the former Secretary of Finance, David Atalik, for comment. The report provides over a dozen recommendations to the governor, including mandating an ethics training for all agencies, implementing cost-cutting measures such as restricting government travel to federally funded programs that are pre-approved, and even discontinuing the 25% additional retiree pension payment until the government stabilizes its current financial state. As of press time, Governor Palacios has yet to schedule any public event to address the leaked reports. Tomas Manglonia for KUAM News on Saipan. Thanks, Tomas. We'll have more news coming up. Keep it here. You're watching KUAM. Get up to the minute news, plus access to alerts, streaming radio, promotions, and more on your mobile device by downloading the KUAM News mobile app. Available at the App Store now. New year, new you, new adventures. How about a new Jeep to go along with it? It is the start something new sales event happening now at Cars Plus. Experience a new level of freedom and adventure in the new Jeep Gladiator. Or how about the all new legendary Jeep Grand Cherokee L? The most awarded SUV ever now features a fresh interior design and three rows of seating. Call us at 671-477-7807 or visit our website at carsplusguam.com to get pre-approved online today. Happy new phone! Start the new year off right with a brand new phone from GTA. For limited time, trade in your old phone and get up to $800 off your new phone with any unlimited plan. Say goodbye to that cracked screen and say hello to the latest 5G phones. We accept over 100 types, any condition, even locked. Get more with GTA. More 5G coverage, more unlimited plans, more savings. Visit GTA.net for more info. Jack, the data shows that people love our more flavorful Ultimate Cheeseburgers. Show me the data. So the data's good. The data's real good. Well, actually, it's the best data I've ever had. My best-selling Ultimate Cheeseburgers, now seasoned as they grill. 
what you need to know from the Northern Marianas. Follow KUAM Cinemai on Instagram for the latest regional headlines. Hafede, welcome back to primetime. Tensions may rise and fall, but the U.S. always stands ready. That's what Commander of Joint Region Marianas Rear Admiral Benjamin Nicholson told us as CNMI leaders call for a balance when it comes to projects in the Pacific. Tomas Menglodnia with the story. The people of Kenya are, uh, they've been absolutely fantastic to our people here. As you know, we've had uh, U.S. Navy CBs and Marine engineers working here for quite some time. A delegation of military officials attended the inauguration of the mayor and municipal council leaders of Tinian in a show of support for the leadership as critical projects like the $21 million 40-year lease of land on Tinian by the Department of Defense for a divert airfield is underway. Local leadership and Governor Arnold Palacios have called for a civilian-first approach to military development in the Marianas. We listen to the elected leadership, uh, both here in Tinian and uh, the, uh, the government in, uh, in Saipan that supports all the CNMI, and we listen to what the issues that they have, and if there are concerns, we look for ways we can find mutually beneficial solutions. Those concerns also rising about China's reach into Taiwan and possible U.S. intervention. In a recent report by the Center for Strategic and International Studies, scholars looked into the potential fallout of a Chinese invasion. Under most circumstances, China is unlikely to succeed in its op operational objectives uh, or to occupy Taipei. And second, the costs of war would be high for all involved, as Mark said, uh, certainly to include the United States. We asked the Rear Admiral for comment on the increased activity in the region. Although we may see tensions rise and fall, we're always prepared. Tomas Maglonia for KUAM News on Tinian. Thanks, Tomas. Well, he's once again Chief Justice Robert Torres, a swearing-in ceremony Torres held today at the Manessa G. Luhan courtroom inside the Judicial Center in Hagatnya. Torres again filling the top position for the Supreme Court of Guam. He spoke with attendees during this morning's ceremony. Today, for the third time, I assume the stewardship of the judiciary of Guam. Since I last stood before you as the head of this branch, our courts have made strong advances in the delivery of justice. Despite the adversities posed by the pandemic, the judiciary never ceased providing critical court services, while also modernizing the way our community can access them. Torres also recognized his fellow justices and the judiciary staff, along with their shared commitment to make innovation an ally. Over the weekend, the island lost one of its talented musicians, Maritzo's Big Ben Nangalta, Jonagan Charfris, with a story. Think about the choices that you make. Hopefully you make no mistakes. A big talent with a big heart. Many mourning the loss of local musician Big Ben Nangalta. The 37-year-old Southern boy passed away over the weekend at the Good Samaritan Hospital in Washington. Nangauta was a staple not only here at KUAM, but all over the island. You could find him performing at fiestas and special events. And if you were lucky, you were able to hear his vocal stylings at your favorite bar or restaurant. In an interview with KUAM for the Culture Club, Nangauta recalls his love of music. I have a picture of me uh, holding a mic, shades, and like rocking out with my dad. So yeah, I think... Since I can talk, I guess so. I was in love with So I to please you. You don't really know. It was around this time last year when Nangauta got COVID and shortly after suffered a heart attack. In good spirits, he appeared on the link. When asked if he knew just how much his music meant to people, I honestly, I just keep doing it, and I, I don't really focus on like the the actual um, emphasis of what my music means to people. I just sort of like trek and just carry on, keep trying to improve my my skills. So I never really like sit down and like ponder on it, you know. But I definitely have a lot of a lot of great mentors in my past that that I'm much appre uh, appreciative for. Vince Mesa, um Savage K, um Auntie Julie Castro from the Castro Boys. I got a lot of a lot of mentors, even Tom Beato. There is no storm too large. 
Several family, friends, and local musicians taking to social media sharing fond memories and the kindness of Big Ben and how his music impacted them. Hold your people, you know, hold them up and um, inspire them, you know, give them inspiration because that's what we're here for. We're here to influence and we're here to inspire. The family has set up a GoFundMe page to help give Big Ben a proper memorial service and appreciate all the love and support all have given through this very difficult time. Rosary and Mass is being held at the San Dimas Church beginning at 5.30 p.m. on Tuesday and Friday, and on Wednesday and Thursday, there's just Rosary at 6 p.m. Jonah Gancharfris, KUM News. He'll carry you. And our condolences to his family, of course, but from one heartbreaking story, to another, the Uggen family, now mourning the loss of their beloved Carabao, Doak. He was well known for his involvement at major public events, bringing adventure and culture to visitors and more. Mitsuki Hiriyama with the story. A Carabao that carried the weight of pretty much everyone who met him. Doak has been in the Uggen family for more than two decades. He played an important role in showcasing the Chamorro culture through his presence and giving rights to locals and visitors alike. But over the weekend, caretaker John Ray Uggen posting this on social media, announcing the beloved Carabao's passing. Ladies and gentlemen, it has come to bid farewell to Doak, a Carabao that has been in this family a business partner going on his last trailer ride. Doak was a familiar sight at the Wednesday night market at Chamorro Village, giving rides and memories the past 20 years. He also pulled the Carabao cart at multiple events held across the island, from weddings, funerals, birthdays, military events to Festpac, the Micronesian Island Fairs, and even the Liberation Parade. This loving animal meant so much to again. He was not only a business partner, but a close family member. Been with us since the year 2000. And uh, just laying down on the trailer for his last trailer ride since he has done it for over 20 years. It's sad, but it's the reality. And uh, he might be going to Carabao Heaven. His last work was December 31st, pulling the Carabao cart with the bride and groom, Mr. and Mrs. Titauto. Again, is working on a memorial to honor Doak at the Chamorro Village and the Valley of the Ladi. He ends with his final farewell. Adios, Doak. Matsuki Hariyama, KUAM News. Adios, Doak. Thank you, Matsuki, for that report. Now for a look at your world at home. Here's a view captured off Maleso. See, you can see Cocos Island there on the horizon. The Guam National Weather Service forecasting Wednesday sunshine with 20% chance of isolated showers. We've made a lot of breakfasts, and along the way, we noticed something was missing. A warm cinnamon roll for breakfast, or with breakfast. A fluffy blueberry muffin from the drive through you're already driving through. A glazed apple fritter, which might find its way into your coffee. These are options every breakfast haver should have, and now they do. Meet the new bakery sweets at McDonald's. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. You don't need to work, babe, keep the smile on your face The moments you can't replay And I'll be around Wherever life takes you, we're always here for you Calvo's Insurance, count on us for life 
KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. Darren Perez is used to breaking new ground. In fact, that's exactly what the Coast Guard recruiter had to do in his backyard in an otherwise unassuming neighborhood in the Estumbo area of Dedido in order to set up his own home gym. Now, I'm not talking about a Peloton or some rowing machine in a rec room in the back of the house. He's put together an entire obstacle course worthy of training next-level athletes looking to compete as American Ninja Warriors, just like him. I had a lot of people reach out uh, about, uh, is Ninja Warrior coming to Guam? So I um, did my research, I teamed up with um, a lot of my friends to help me with the uh, legal side and the business side of things to make this gym officially um, a backyard uh, business. So uh, the idea is to grow the sport on Guam to a point that I can eventually uh, make an indoor course the entire course was built over eight months, hand-constructed by Darren, his two kids, his father-in-law, and several friends. And he knows a thing or two about starting from scratch. Before I even had any of this, I was literally um, doing pull-ups in, in a doorway. Um, I was traveling a lot, so I would take our little uh, hand carries, fill it up with whatever I can, and start lifting weights uh, the best I can, because I had no equipment. But uh, you gotta do what you gotta do. Darren's made a name for himself competing at the highest level against world-class talent who are now his friends. And he's using his course to help get the next generation ready to represent Guam in competition. And, as larger than life as his home gym is, it's dwarfed by his vision for the sport. I'm a big dreamer and I like to make things come to reality, so I want to see uh, Team Guam uh, not just at the World Championships, which we have coming up this year, but eventually in 2028, the first uh, Olympics to have ninja. Now, since not everyone has such an uncommon structure in their backyard, what do his neighbors think about his creation? Sometimes I see them pull up a chair and they'll come and just watch, wave, you know, say hi. They so love it. They see uh, the youth coming out. So it's something that is uh, positive in the community. Everything is built uh, by hand. Uh, we bought all the tools, we bought all the equipment locally, and me personally, um, aside from carpentry in high school, I've gotten a lot of experience through uh, the Coast Guard because I'm actually uh, an engineer in the Coast Guard and just working with the different jobs that I have, it's really helped me um, get the structure together. Finally, as for the most obvious question, let's just say Darren is his own best customer. How many times have you actually run the course? Uh, honestly, I'm back here almost <laughs> like two, three times a week minimum. Mm. Yeah, because uh, I'm just training all the time. Um, either I'm training or I'm just doing it because I love it so much. It's just, it's a way of fitness without, oh, I gotta go to the gym today and I'm gonna go lift weights. You know, that cool, if that's your thing, that's your thing. But uh, I lift weights before, but reality is um, this right here, it's always changing, always different. So it helps keep me personally engaged with uh, different styles of working out. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. better with more customize and save with the fastest internet speeds in the marianas by adding mobile phone and tv to your bundle with business bundles plus docomo pacific business work better together hey you want to order some taco bell Grilled chicken burritos, two bold flavors. Order on the app, only at Taco Bell. Finally tonight, your Cold Stone Crew Marie Birthday Club shoutouts submitted on KUAM.com. 
All right, everybody, back to work. January 17th, a Tuesday. So happy birthday to Maya Augustine, who celebrates birthday number 11. And we love you so much, Maya. Say a very proud mom, dad, Anthony, grandma, and grandpa, Auntie Alyssa, and Auntie Alana. Happy 11th birthday, Miss Maya. Violetta B. Tobes, happy birthday to our mom, grandma, and great grandma. We wish you many blessings and lots of love. Thank you for all that you have done for us. Love the families, all of them, and all of us on Guam. Miss Violetta, happy birthday to you. And Christine gets belated birthday love. She was born on the 16th. Happy birthday to our beautiful mom, and may your day be blessed and as are amazing as you. We love you for eternity. With all the love in the world, Damien, Araya, Jonathan, Drayden, and all your familia send you the very best. And that's your primetime show. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Nick Delgado. Stay safe and good night. KUAM News Hotspot is brought to you by Pacific Points, Do More, Get More, and Calvo Enterprises, Inc. Hot today, everybody. I'm Jason Salas. We are KUAM, and if you're watching us, that means two things. You're either on YouTube, live, Facebook, live, or KUAM TV 8, live, and you're probably not watching football, so somebody tell me who is winning between the Cowboys and the Bucks, please. All right, I'm not even a Cowboys fan. All right, we have a jam-packed show. Lots to get to, lot to tell you about, so let's go. The Menu, brought to you by King's Restaurant. Always open, always local. And Ruby Tuesday Guam, home of the fresh garden bar. We will check in with my dear friend and seventh grade classmate, Claire Calvo, as she talks to her sister about the reopening of Payless Supermarkets in the Micronesia Mall. Also, my two friends, basically my sisters, Liz and Gina from Remax Diamond Realty, are going to talk about whether you should equate the interest rate to your blood pressure. Mm. And we're also going to take a look at another friend of mine, Landon Idlet from the National Weather Service, seeing what is going on with the rain, then not rain, then rain, then not rain. You kind of see it's kind of a pattern there. But first of all, we have some news to pass along to you because topping off your mid-morning show, 34-year-old Anter Wea was arrested and faces charges of aggravated assault and drug possession. On the evening of January 10th, Wea allegedly stabbed a man with a pair of scissors at the Dedido Skate Park. The victim was able to point out Wea while he was talking to police. Officers did search Wea, at which time they found a pipe and bags of meth in his pocket. 31-year-old Ronald James Jumbalake is facing a charge of assault on a peace officer as a third-degree felony. Court documents state that on January the 11th, police were called to Club USA, where Jumbalake had allegedly pulled a fire alarm. Employees said he was also pounding on the doors of the establishment, which was already closed, and said, quote, I kill people for a living. You can be next. Jumbalake then allegedly tried to swing his right fist at a police officer before he was told he was being arrested. The officer was able to block the punch with his arm. All right, let's go check in with our friend Claire Calvo. She has this week's Weekly Renewal. Weekly Renewal is brought to you by Calvo Select Care. Half a day, I'm Clara Calvo bringing you your Weekly Renewal. Today I am here with Kathy Calvo, who is the president of Payless Supermarkets. Welcome, Kathy. Half a day. Thank you so much. So Payless is starting 2023 with a bang. There's a lot of exciting things going on namely Micronesian Mall Payless. Share with us a little bit about that opening. This morning at approximately 10 a.m., we opened our a new door in our Micronesian Mall Payless location for a newly renovated 26,500 square foot Payless market. And we had a crowd that wrapped around the building and this is a soft opening. Right. But we're really excited that we're finally open after a one-year one closure. Um, well, the, so we said year. today's a soft opening, and I thought it was serendipitous because the grand opening happens to fall on the Lunar New Year, which is Saturday, January twenty-first. Right, and the Lunar New Year is the twenty-second. But you know, it's the same weekend, so that's that's special. Um, so Micronesia Mall Palace, of course, everyone's been excited about it reopening, but. 
It's kind of been the go-to store initially and primarily for the Health Smart and for that specialty item type shopping. So has, can you share if there's anything that's expanded or changed in that department? Well, we like to call the Micronesia Mall Payless the grandmother, the grandma of the Health Smart department. And we've actually been in this location for three, almost three decades. 2024 will be our third decade at the Micronesia Mall. We um, acquired the location from Safeway, former Safeway, in 1994. And this is our fourth renovation. Wow. I believe it was the second or the third renovation when this young gal from LA came in and had all these new products that our buyers were not familiar with. They were a lot of her detox products, natural and organic and plant-based. Plant-based, and they were important for your detox program. So we decided to grow it. And this is what we do. We listen to our customers. We try to be on top of the game and dynamic and uh, so we ended up identifying a portion of the store to be called HealthSmart, which was natural and organic. Right. And we had a lot of good feedback and influence from Claire Calvo, going back to the early 2000s when you did your detox program. And so that had continued up until last year when we shut our doors. Today, when you come into our store, like all our other Payless stores, Health Smart and Natural and Organics are now integrated into the mainstream of our store. Right. And we're finding that it's much more accepted and That's the demand what I is higher. Yeah. So we've always, we've incorporated the uh, Natural and Organics, actually no, it's separated in the produce section, but um, everywhere now, else it's integrated. The, yes, yeah. the freeze and chill, the uh, dry grocery variety, it's now integrated because we feel that it truly is mainstream. So you have definitely seen over the years it really expand the people's interest and Absolutely. more open. Absolutely. But what we are doing is we have shelf talkers that say either Health Smart or Natural and Organics that will identify a specific item in our stores. And then now there's also an in-house dietitian. Right? Yes, so we hired uh, Rose, who is a certified dietitian, and she conducts uh, nutrition classes, she works with the community, she does store tours, and we are actually, so it's, we, we feel that we are a real learning resource in addition to carrying the products, and that is our commitment to the community, it's part of our mission statement, and wellness goes hand in hand with our mission statement. Well, that component is very important, teaching people, because uh, you know a lot of times you walk into a store and someone will pick something up like kombucha. For many years, people are like, I think it's bad, it tastes, you know, it smells sour, without knowing that that is naturally how it's, those naturally occurring bacteria, it's supposed to taste that way. So it's great that there's someone to help educate, which is hence EduKitchen. Um, so aside, so there's EduKitchen and there's, People could, how could they find out when there's classes or things to, or tours? If you go on to our online uh, site uh, through the Payless Markets, um, paylessmarkets.com, you will find a section on our wellness program. And there's usually a schedule there of upcoming tours or activities. Um, our Education Center is in Mighty. We have we no longer have one in Denido, but it, it's an area for a community to be. It's a, a place where you can teach. Mm -hmm. We have uh, chefs who come in periodically and they talk about how to prepare healthy meals or any type of meal. So it's, it's a very dynamic That's a process. Yes. It's, it's one thing to provide a product or an item, but to actually empower someone with the tools and learning how to prepare something or more about each product they like. And we also have one more thing that's yeah. coming up and that's our annual Pay Less Kick the Fat 5K, 10K and Health Fair. And um, our site is open. We are, we are now taking applications. There's an early bird special and this is March 18. And we're going to be back to the live races oh, with fireworks and all these. <laughs> 
excitement. And when you come for packet pickup, we will be having the, um, a wellness fair. So that's another opportunity to connect with healthcare providers on island and our dietitian, and just to be a, a resource center healthy products from PMS. Thank you so much. Of Thank course. You. Especially for all that you provide for the ion. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you all. I'll see you next time on your weekly renewal. Weekly renewal is brought to you by Calvo Select Care. All right, now let's get you caught up on what is happening in Tinseltown, Hollywood. It is time for your ion entertainment. A release date has been set for Idris Elba's highly anticipated movie, Luther, The Fallen Sun. Something's coming. The actor also shared a teaser trailer on social media. In Luther, The Fallen Sun, a gruesome serial killer is terrorizing London while disgraced detective John Luther sits behind bars. Luther decides to break out of prison to solve the case by any means necessary. The Netflix film will hit select theaters February 24th and then stream on the platform March 10th. Lizzo and Ed Sheeran are among the headliners at this year's New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival. The festival, which features hundreds of acts, will take place over two weekends beginning April 28th. The lineup also includes Santana, John Batiste, Kane Brown, The Lumineers, and Wu-Tang Clan. Hey! And tonight on CBS, it's the neighborhood's first episode of the new year. Now would be a perfect time for us to take that honeymoon we never had but always dreamed of. Madrid. <laughs> she thinking international? Calvin and Tina finally go on their honeymoon, while Dave and Gemma team up with Malcolm and Marty on a project intended to surprise Calvin when he returns. Catch an all-new episode of The Neighborhood, followed by Bob Hart's Abishola tonight on CBS or stream anytime on Paramount Plus. That's your Ion Entertainment, Donya Backus, CBS News, Los Angeles. All right, thanks so much. I always get like Joser confused with Idris Elba. They Kind of almost the same. All right, please stay tuned. There's much more coming up after this. How deep do Pizza Hut's roots run in the islands? Through all the decades, we know what you love. Great taste at an even better price. Like our large three topping carryout pizza for just $13.99. You choose your favorite toppings, meat, vegetables, or any combination that totals three. Our $13.99 large three topping pizza. Order online and carry one out today. Only at Pizza Hut, the island's best. Guam's auto appearance specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's auto appearance specialist. Over 20 years of experience. We are talking interest rates. Ooh, I, I know scary, scary, scary. But for, first of all, Liz and Gina, we're, we're back together. The, the, the band is back together again. First of all, thank you guys for giving us that amazing peach cheesecake that you dropped off last week. That was unbelievable. That was a pear tart. Pear tart. Pear cheesecake, yeah. My yeah. my my, br my brain is so blown by it. I can't even remember exactly what it is. It, it was absolutely delicious, though. So everybody, please, you know, we're nobody special here. Please uh, get some of that for yourself. Yeah, um, it's a special order, by the way. You can't just walk in and get it. Okay, you well, have where can they get it? Uh, they can buy it at Mespa. There you go. So it's Mespa, totally, thank you. Yeah. It's totally heavenly. Yes, and the food coma I was in hopefully prepared me for the topic we're talking about today. Miss Gina, because we are talking about interest rates, ay, ay, ay. Um, it's gone up. It was a historically low. Um, how, how do we even figure, you know, a, a lot of people say that that is the, the barometer, if you will, with how we figure out how to do uh, land deals. But should people put so much faith into, into the interest rate as if it, you know, if it, as if it were gospel? Well, not, not, well, I mean, you're stuck with it if you're going to deal with financing, right? There is no way around the, I mean, do I want to deal with interest rates? I have no choice. If I need to get a bank loan, I'm dealing with interest rates. Uh, what we're promoting right now is proceed with caution. If I'm working with a buyer, the first thing I've asked them to do, and I typically do this anyway, because I always want them to be armed and prepared, right? 
you're out there looking for a home, you really should go and get pre-qualified again. If it's been a month since your pre-qualification, I say go in and check. You know, have a have a open communication with your loan officer if you are looking at doing financing. Um, and just, you know, let your loan officer know, hey, if the interest rate goes up or down, can you just automatically shoot me a, a, a new pre-qualification sheet so I know what I'm doing while I'm out there looking actively looking for homes? Because it's still it's still a really competitive market, guys. Uh, don't be misled that the interest rates have gone up and that, you know, the overall economic outlook is, you know, a little bit on the red side, that that translates to prices going down. I don't see it. I thought it was going to happen, but I'm not seeing it. So this, this isn't the optimal microeconomy that we could exist in and everything, but at the same time, the market's not completely dead. No, it is and that it, it because our inventory, we have a shortage of inventory, and then the prices have actually, I mean, if you're looking for a house and you budget it 400000 many of the homes that probably you'd love to buy are probably in the five and 600000 and that's accountable to, of course, it, and these are brand new homes, by the way, and that accounts for the rise in construction costs limited manpower. So there's so many factors that have affected uh, the prices of our homes. So as Gina puts it, yes, you, you have to, if you were qualified for 450 and you're shopping in that price range, interest rates have gone up, then that also has changed that your pre-qualification may have dropped due to the interest rate because even your monthly payment, uh, let's say you were supposed to be paying 1900 a month, and because of the interest rates, and you're probably paying twenty one hundred, so three hundred above your your budget for a mortgage payment has gone up. So yeah, I think the message that Gina and I want to give out uh, to the community is: be prepared and plan. What do you, what do you do? You plan for the best, but also prepare for the worst. Mm -hmm. So you want to be ready and. There is talk that the interest rates will drop, but uh, we haven't really seen a big drop in the interest rates, and that's all up to the federal government. So we, you just have to be vigilant and keep checking and stay in touch with your loan officer just to make sure that if it changes and your budget was a certain amount, you may not be in that price range anymore. Okay, ladies, uh, key, key phrase there that, that Liz said, and I thought very smartly so, was, um, you know, stay informed, right? And I know some people have, have tried to liken, you know, the interest rates um, to your blood pressure, your mm -hmm. score, right? Like, um, and they say, it's very, very important. You have, to keep, you have to keep an eye on it. And you have to try and work within that. But if you fanaticize over it and, and you focus too much on it, it's going to drive you crazy. Well, well, Jace, here's the difference between your blood pressure and the interest rates. Oh, I would love to hear this. You have control over your blood pressure. You can influence it. You can do things to change it. <clears throat> you can change your diet. You can go walk every day. So there are things you can do that will help control your blood pressure. You cannot influence the interest rates. I mean, I, we can't. We cannot control it. We can't influence it. We are just along for the ride. So there's the biggest difference. That's a very, okay, that's a very good point. And I'm saying send a pear tart to Gina for that <laughs> bit of knowledge right there. Pear tart is coming your way, Gina. You too, you too, Liz. I love you guys. I'm, I'm going to set you guys right there. My philosophy that, no, is. No, that's really, really good information. The things I cannot control, I'm not going to worry about them. So interest rates, you can't control it. What you can do, though, is you and your loan could be like this and you let your loan officer know, listen, I know the interest rate is fluctuating. So every time there's a change, send me, send me a, you know, send me a new pre so I know what I'm doing while I'm out there. And this is especially true with people that are building. You're in the same boat. You've already contracted with somebody to build your home at this price, but now the interest rates are fluctuating. But I do have good news though. You know, Liz was talking about, um, she's talking about new construction. That's where the, the prices are coming down. I've been talking with contractors who have homes that 
just recently got an occupancy permit and they've come to me and they've said, okay, I I'm ready to sell this house. And the conversation is, well, if you had listed this last year, we're here. But this year, what's happened is with interest rates going up, a lot of buyers have dropped out of the market because they can no longer afford to buy. Or even if they could afford to buy, the monthly payment has gone up and they don't want to, they don't want to make be obligated to that, that type of monthly payment. Mm. So they decided they don't want to buy. So guess what? We had, let's say we had a hundred people who might have looked at your home. Now we have 50. What does that do? It had you have to adjust the price down because you have less buyers to pick from. So that's where I think the deals are. Do you agree, Liz? Oh, I agree. Um, but it's just bear in mind, it won't be drastic change, but the contractors definitely want to move their properties because they want to move on to their next project. And they may be, and the, the, you know, what's cool about our developers, they're building two, three, maybe four homes at a time. And what they need to do is move the monies from one project to the next. So they sooner they do that, make a little money on it then they can move it and keep moving along with their different projects. So yeah, it, th there's room, there's a little margin there uh, for negotiation. So I guess the, the takeaway from today's, in today's episode is, you know, be informed, be prepared, but don't fanaticize over it. And, and, like, and like you said, Gina, because ultimately this really is beyond any of our ability to directly control. So, I mean, it is what it is. Yeah, and I, I always tell our buyers, be prepared to have plan A, B, and C. If you want to buy this home, it doesn't work out. At least you have a backup uh, to purchase another one. So um, have your options open. And as we say, yes, be prepared, be vigilant. The best plan, I mean, you have A, B, and C. I'm sure you ladies would agree. My best plan is PT. That's pear tart. So let, let's go get one of those. And like, we can talk about, I'm, I'm not talking about IR interest rate. I'm tired of that, but pear tart hey, sounds Jason, good to me. I can picture that right in your face. <laughs> <laughs> it's go, it's going into my stomach. I, I mean, it, as beautiful as it looks, it's, uh, it's not like the interest rate that that's definitely, um, that's definitely, uh, going down Yeah. to my stomach. You, can All right. order pear tart. you can't order the interest rate. Thank you yep. again. Sage wisdom from Gina and Liz. Ladies, thank you. We appreciate it as always. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Get up to the minute news plus access to alerts, streaming radio, promotions, and more on your mobile device by downloading the KUAM News mobile app available at the App Store now. What's the move? Do you ever wonder how your favorite products make their way into your local stores? Most arrive on state-of-the-art mats and vessels that transport containers of food, household items, equipment and supplies into the islands every week. Because we know that you depend on us, we work closely with our partners to ensure that our shipments arrive on time, all the time, so you can find your favorite products when you need them. We transport the region's most precious cargo that supports successful businesses and promotes a better quality of life for our families. Matson is proud to have been the hometown shipping carrier for Guam, the CNMI, and Micronesia for the past 25 years. And you can count on us to be here for generations to come. Subscribe to our KOM News Digest, our weekly email newsletter with all kinds of information straight to your inbox. Just subscribe and we'll make sure to keep you informed and entertained with news from the KOM News team, what to watch on NBC and CBS, and the latest promotions from KOM Communications. Go to KOM.com, click on the newsletter tab at the top of the homepage, register, and you're all set. Brought to you by Uno Go, Guam On Demand. All right, everybody, welcome back to the hot spot. There was one topic and one topic only on my mind the past three-day holiday weekend. By the way, happy uh, Dr. Martin Luther King 
uh, Junior Day of Service to all of you, and thank you for all, of, all that you do to honor Dr. King's uh, legacy. I caught up with Landon Idlet with the National Weather Service. Rain! And a lot of it was the order of the day, and he said there might be s some more of it. And then yesterday, it was unbelievably hot. My windows were sweating. So you know what? We're going to bring Landon back into the KOM News Zoom room right now to figure out not just what happened, but why. Landon, half a day, man. You're, 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 a man, you're a man of science. Did you expect yesterday to, be, yesterday to be as hot as it was after Saturday and Sunday were as wet as they were? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and that's typical when you have a lot of prolonged days of showers and thunderstorms and cloudy skies. That sun has a, a terrible time beating down to the surface. That's where we were yesterday. We had a lot of sunshine yesterday. So just that difference of a few degrees uh, makes a huge difference when you're actually outside in the middle of it. And that's where I was bush cutting my yard yesterday. I feel like I was scorched after about an hour of it. Um, but that was just the luck of the draw, how the, the sun finally comes out after what's been nearly uh, a week and a half of just clouds and rain across the islands. And of course, we have the, the latest rainfall numbers here from the last week, and it's pretty astounding. Uh, yesterday rainfall, we only had about a, just under a tenth of an inch here at the office, but actual rainfall received for January so far is 13 and a quarter inch. Normally, we're at just shy of three inches of rainfall, so we're at a difference of nearly a foot of rain. We shattered that record. For the month. We shattered that. So this is still ranked third as the third wettest January on record with the other two Januaries with tropical cyclones. Uh, 2021, last year, we had about two inches of rainfall by this point. Since December 1st, we've had nearly two feet of rain um, when normally we're at eight inches for the two-month period. So we're well above average for the two-month uh, totals. And where are we right now? Is it going to be dry season yet? Yeah, we've been talking about a return to dry season. If you're outside this morning looking at the showers, you're thinking, oh, no, the showers are back. And here they are. They're pushing through. But the, the running joke here in the office is, when is dry season? Well, it's not so much a matter of when, but where is it? And it's about 20 miles to our northeast. So you see that big, empty area of blackness. That's the dry air. So we have this line of showers pushing through with a little bit of a trade wind surge. That's pushing off through the island right now from east to west. Once that clears out, the clouds will linger a little bit longer. But we're going to get significantly drier. And so I'm going to pull up something we've not seen in a while, the water vapor imagery. All that yellow, that's dry air. Uh, the blue ah. is the moisture. The yellow is the dry air. So we're looking at the atmospheric uh, moisture. And so all the showers that we're seeing this morning is primarily uh, close to the surface. So it's very shallow layer trade wind moisture, not deep into the atmosphere where we have the torrential downpours and the thunderstorms. And what's east of us? Well, lots and lots of yellow. Very dry air mass. This is more seasonal for this time of the year with a deep tropical moisture well to our south across Micronesia and the drier 